represent the Franklin Pierce Law Center in the U.S. and the Intellectual Property Academy of Singapore in Singapore. So I'm here wearing two hats. Well, personally, I was actually very enthusiastic um, about the whole concept of being able to discuss Internet governance. Uh, in this kind of forum, given that it's the first inaugural event. Um, but specifically where my organizations respectively are concerned, we were excited to see copyright and you know the bigger issue of IPR um, on the agenda for some of the discussions and in the context of the various pillars as was discussed in Tunis. So we wanted to be part of that conversation and we wanted to see if there was any work that we could do that we could contribute. Uh, given that, for example, my law school is in the United States and the Intellectual Property Academy is in Singapore, we thought that would be a nice example of multi-stakeholder, you know, multi-geographical collaboration. And so now that we're here, well, at least I'm here, and we've got a dynamic coalition that's just been formed to work on balancing copyright and the Internet, um, we think that this has all been really great and great progress for you know, the months of work that's gone into this. I think, you know, as we've seen through this entire process, you know, the, the Woodsers process starting in Geneva, then Tunis, and now at the forum here in Athens, um, the concept of internet governance has, is, is very broad. It's possible to define it, but it's very broad. And there are various, I guess, fundamental principles that are important to internet governance. And some of those principles include openness, transparency, um, inclusiveness, for example. And where copyright is concerned, first of all, it is something that affects everyone globally um, in the sense that you either produce works or you use works or you do both. Um, there are copyright laws globally, many of which are in conformity with certain uniform international standards. And certainly the problems of reproduction, of digital distribution, um, they're not national problems. Um, and so in the sense, uh, the, the problems that are not national also have certain fundamental common characteristics. For example, if you award an exclusive right and the copyright to a particular individual, by its very nature, the right means you can exclude somebody else from using that particular work. And that therefore could lead to a lack of openness, a lack of access by other people unless you as the copyright holder give your permission, your authorization for those other people to use the work. And one thing that's happened with the internet is that the policy balance that was very carefully calibrated over the many years of copyright's history needs to be redressed, readdressed. Um, because a lot of the technology, a lot of the copying capability, a lot of the creative capability, like remixing, were not possible before the internet and related technology. So what we need to do is to look at how that policy balance between guaranteeing that the content creators have their rights and their compensation, but ensuring that there is public access to information, access to knowledge in the public interest, that's a very important issue and is certainly related to internet governance. One of the difficulties, um, not just with copyright law, but with a lot of law, is that in terms of how it's applicable, it's national in nature. A nation cannot legislate for another nation. Uh, but one good thing about copyright and IP laws is that there are a lot of international standards um, in the form of international treaties, which are then implemented by each country. And so there is a measure of standardization, but with some kind of individualized national differences. In terms of um, governance, how the standards and how the laws come to be, there's really two ways. Uh, one is what we would call hard law, which is the treaties and the national laws that I spoke of. Uh, but there's also what we call soft law, which are norms that are built through discussion and through consensus. Uh, both the hard law and the soft law can come from different players in different forums. Um, the World Intellectual Property Organization, for example, um, there's a lot of treaty discussions that go on there, but there's also other norms that can also develop from the discussions there that become practices. And so it's a fairly fluid process that encompasses many different players and that can take place in various forms. And so there is no 
that it isn't necessarily just a top down, a, a, a government or a series of governments says, you know, this shall be it. It doesn't happen that way. Um, the governments can get together and agree on a treaty. That's the hard law. But other contributors like civil society, NGOs, other participants in the process can participate in other norm setting. And that, we think, again, is what the IGF um, can also help. And that's why we're here. I think the process can be illustrative. Um, I would hesitate to say that you know, in the copyright field that we would be the model, um, in part because it's just one of many discussions that are going on, and in part because we don't know what's actually going to happen. But I think the process that we're adopting of involving governments, um, international policymakers, the business community, um, as well as you know, individuals and civil society, that that's a great model to operate on. Um, Laws get their legitimacy, not just because they're written in the statute book, but they have to be accepted um, by the persons whom you're purporting to govern. And so to the extent that you have that participation, that you have that consensus, then it makes that law valid and it makes it lasting. And that's what we're hoping to achieve. To put it very generally, I would like to see, in copyright terms, that balance that we keep speaking of at this forum happen. Um, striking the balance between giving the creators their due, whether that's economic or other kinds of rights, but also ensuring that access to knowledge, freedom of speech, and openness and transparency is not you know, forgotten and left by the wayside. I think that balance is really, really important. And the internet has enabled a lot of creativity to happen, a lot of collaborations to happen. Um, and some of them may very well um, not be legal by current copyright laws in certain countries. I would like to see that change, but I don't want to see a situation where everything is free and absolute nor do I want to see a situation where everything is controlled and absolute in the other extreme. I would really like to see that balance be struck. My greatest fear is that we stop these dialogues or that these discussions don't get us anywhere. Uh, we've heard some talk here, you know, in the air at the forum about at some point the talk has to be translated into action. And that's my fear, that we can discuss these issues and discuss around these issues without actually coming up with best practices, with models, with recommended flexibilities for different countries to implement in their laws. That's one thing that the Dynamic Coalition I'm part of is hoping to address. And if we, if we and the other people working with us um, don't happen to convince other people that that's a necessary job to do, then that would be my fear come to life. Incredible. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much.